Hi everybody, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Mark Lipinski, Mr. Electric is out mowing the lawn again. I don't have very much to talk with you about, as I say every week, but I really don't have very much to talk to you about today. I just really have a few things I want to show you, and then I'm going to get back to my sewing because I have a project I want to finish this week. By the way, gosh, I need a haircut like bad. It's too bad that somebody who doesn't have any hair at all actually needs a haircut. Uh, you, I, I, I just do it myself. I just use a number four blade and I go all over it and what happens happens. Hi Karen, I'm glad you're here. Uh, hi Diana, how are you? Uh, Susie, hi, how are you? I, Susie, I like your new, um, your new Facebook page. It's all full of positive uh, reinforcement and positive things and I think it's really neat. So Susie, you might want to put that up uh, on this down here so people can join. Um, hi Jody, how are you? Good morning. Hi Sandy, good morning to you too. Uh, Alicia, nice to see you this morning. Uh, I really need a haircut. Look at this. I look like a rat. I, listen, I wasn't even going to do it this morning because I didn't have a lot to talk with you about and I even told Jeff, go cut the lawn because I, I have just very few things to show you. But uh, I thought I should just be here just for a couple of minutes. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Cayenne. How are you? Sally, hi. How are you today? Did you sell any turtle books last week? Hi, Brenda. Nice to see you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am actually going to... Uh, um, what am I actually going to do? I'm going to show you some things, hi Linda, and I'm going to open it up to any questions that you have. So if you have any questions, and just that since me, just me, just write your questions down here and I'll answer them, all right? Um, that will be fun. And we'll see what we come up with. Hi Susan, nice to see you. Louise from Canada, I'm glad you're here again. Hi Carrie from Texas. Howdy! Howdy! You know, I went to a rodeo in Texas, in Fredericksburg, Texas, when I was a young man, and it, it's changed my life. I now love rodeos, and I now love rodeos in Texas. Hi, Penny. Happy Saturday to you. And Marilyn, hi. I'm glad you're here. Louise, I'm glad you made it, but you made it for something that I don't really have a lot to talk about. Um, I am working on some projects and some classes for the upcoming new year. And, oh, well, thanks, Terry. It wouldn't be a Saturday morning without your smiling face either. Thank you very much. Howdy. Uh, <laughs> hi, hi, babe. Wow, that's pretty hot. Oh, look, not wearing blue either. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Is that a banana? Oh, no, it's a taco. <laughs> hi, Michelle. Bean, how are you, Bean? I, hadn't se I haven't talked to you in so long. We need, to, we need a reunion, don't you think, Bean? You and me, we need to go, like, maybe I should come up to you this time. Maybe uh, at the beginning of September or something, come up to you and maybe we could do a shop hop up there. What do you think? Good looking. Susan says, hey, good looking. Poor Susan. She hasn't had her eyesight since 1975. <laughs> and hello from Nebraska. I'm very jealous. Nebraska, land of runzas, number one. If you haven't eaten a runza... You have to go to Nebraska to try it. And number two, they have some of the most amazing quilt shops out there. Gina, hi from California, where Mr. Electric, I have to tell you, between you, me, and the lamppost, he's very homesick for California, and we would love to move back out there. I just don't think we can afford what we want in San Diego. I mean, he wants to live in San Diego, and even if we got top dollar for our property here, we'd live in a 9,000 square foot room in San Diego. <laughs> so, oh, Bean, I didn't know that you have a new house. Well, I knew that things were moving around. I didn't realize that you have, you actually moved. Roz from New Jersey. Hi. Hi, Ruth. Happy anniversary. It was your, what, 40, 41st? Happy anniversary to you and your husband. Roseanne just joined. Uh, Susan, you make runs at home. I actually made runs at home, and they were delicious. They really were delicious. I found the, the recipe online. Very good. But I'll come to your house, Susan. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Linda from Michigan. Michigan's thumb. Michigan looks like this, so she's up here. Hi, how are you? I like a Michigan. I'm going to be in Michigan next year, too. Hi, Lori. Good morning. Nice to see you. Oh, Ruth, it was your 30th anniversary. Mm-hmm. 30th. Uh, 
but happy anniversary. Somehow I thought it was 40th. Somebody's was 40th. Chris Turner from San Diego. That's not our Chris Turner. Oh, that's my nephew. Hi, Chris Turner. What are you doing there? How funny. Uncle Jeff is out mowing the lawn. You know, I have no pity. I'm like, get out there. So he's out mowing lawn. I, he, uh, somebody sent the cutest picture of your son and um, Colin. Uh, uh, ben and Colin uh, to Jeff. And it was uh, amazing. So I'm using it as a screensaver. Hi, Bon. Bon, how are you? Um, so let's see. So you're coming up for a year and your flat is still not decorated. How old am I now? Well, I'm 59. And I just turned 59 in June, so I have a, a way to go. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you. How's everything going? Better, I hope. And hi, Deborah. Hi, Deborah. You know, the Hello Kitty truck is in Connecticut. And hello from Canada. I love me some Canada. Good morning, Lori. Um, and... Uh, Chris Turner, I was so sorry that I wasn't able to fly out there this time when, when Mr. Electric was out there with you guys. I, it really was very sad, and I felt really badly that I was homebound. But, you know, there he is, and, he'll, and, and I'll be out next time, hopefully. I'm sure I will. Um, I, what do you mean I, I didn't misplace my phone? What? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, Heather, it is very romper room like. Well, let's get started. First of all, I have to tell you something. I've had this aching, uh, and those you creatives understand this, this aching to actually create something that I've had in the back of my mind for a long time. And I, I first of all, I need to tell you, I'm a very traditional quilter, and I really love yellow and white quilts. And I've been searching for the perfect yellow for some time, and I finally found it in a Michael Miller fabric. So um, here's what I got this week. A bolt of this beautiful yellow. Now, I, the lighting in this room isn't so hot, so I'm not sure that you could see it. But it is the most beautiful uh, buttery yellow. It's so soft and so beautiful. It's by Michael Miller. Uh, let's see what the, the name of it is. Uh, it, the number, it's from their Cotton Couture, which, of course, I love their Cotton Couture. Uh, and the, the number, it's, I, is it Canary, C-A-N-A-D? Um, and I, you know, I can find out the name. I'll put it on the blog when I blog this so that uh, you have a contact. But honestly, the most beautiful buttery yellow. And this would look so beautiful with like a snow white moda, you know, like a snow white, uh, not moda, but uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about, the snow white rather than the bright white. Um, uh, fabric, and I just want to do some blue, yellow and white quilts. I, I just have a, a, a yen for it. Now, you know, this wasn't so many yards. I mean, it looks like, a, oh, a whole bowl. Well, it's only 12 yards. Well, you know, a queen size quilt is what? Eight? So, uh, for a two color quilt. So, seven. So, I can get a couple of quilts out of this. And so, I'm really, really looking forward to it because I just want to do, I want to do something that's very graphic and very modern with one of the quilts. And the other one, I want to do something that is meaty, like a lot of small, tiny pieces, like I usually do, um, but just with two colors. And I just think the butter is, it, it's just so classic. And it goes with everything in every home, in every, you know, in every, you know, whether you have Mediterranean, like my mother, with funeral home drapes that she had custom made, that all you needed to do was replace the sofa with a coffin, and it looks good. Um, but Or it can go in something very modern or very eclectic. So this butter yellow is so, so beautiful. All right, so uh, let's see. Also, I made a trip to New Hope, Pennsylvania this week, which, by the way, sounds so exotic. It's really 40 minutes for me. I went to the Glorious Color Studios, uh, Liza Lucy's house <laughs> that she operates her business from because I'm doing a quilt um, next year that I want to teach. And, um, and I'm doing a workshop in Warwick, uh, New York, this November the 1st. And I want to try something different. Now, a workshop is different than a class. 
uh, classes where I go in and I have a preconceived idea of what I want to teach you and how I teach, and, and we come up with a project. Well, the workshop is actually something that I want to teach, but that I have never taught before. And so I do the workshop for free for a guild for a new project that I actually get to get all my kinks out and get their feedback and figure out the timing and what works. And it's really important for teachers to do that. I think it's erroneous, as I did early on in my career, to just walk in with an idea and a pattern and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Now, I could bullshit my way through anything, but I don't want to bullshit. And I don't think when people buy uh, a class that they deserve to get the bullshit, right? They deserve to get a really good class. So anyway, I'm doing this all in shot cottons. And so I went down to find some shot cottons. So these are the gorgeous shot cottons I got from Glorious Color. So I got kind of a rainbow, that like kind of forest green. And again, I don't know whether it's my monitor or whether it's just this bad lighting because it's, it's yellowish. But this is such a beautiful dark olive. And then this is a a beautiful uh, light lilac and kind of an off teal and a, a salmon peach. And then here's something that's a little more rusty and a little more golden. Whoops, sorry, a little more golden and then a dark teal. Um, then we, then I have some, like it's like a reddish rust and an orange almost, a dark orange. Uh, a, a darker teal than the one before, and then a couple of the stripes, because I think it's always important when you're doing something. Yeah, I'm sure it's reading really orange, Diane. I, I mean, I think this is really, um, really bad lighting, and I really do need to get some real lights. I don't know why. These are um, from my dining room, which are a little orange, but it also... These are those little lights that look like candles, but they're, they're clear. They're not frosted. They have these... Uh, uh, what do you call them? these little light uh, covers on top of them? But I don't understand why it's reading so yellow. I'm going to have to get some more. But anyway, I think it's always important, especially if you're doing a, a, a modern kind of thing or, you know, to add a little. I like a little design in there some way. Um, and then I got a little more because I mean, I, you know, larger cuts because I need some uh, some larger cuts. And then I got some larger cuts in, in other uh, colors like a very light, light, light blue and a goldenrod and and this kind of watermelony gold and this other sh this other really bluish green shot cotton with two different colors in it. So if you look at it from different angles, you'll see like a blue or you'll see a purple. And then of course my favorite, the lime green. Um, oh, look who's here! Let's get him in here. Hey, Turner, yeah. come on in here for a minute, I can't. please. <laughs> He's completely naked. Put on his shirt and come in. <laughs> he took off all of his clothes when he came in from cutting the grass. Let me come in like I am. Yeah, we're going to see if he's going to come in. He just threw, he took off all of his clothes to put him in the laundry, and now he needs a shirt. Just, just, put, <laughs> just put on his shirt and come on in. All right, just put on a shirt and come on in. You don't need to get a shower right now. Oh, that's a look. I'm telling you, folks, there's not even the dog, even the almost dead tulip on her last hind leg is barking because she is so horrified by this sight. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, boy. That's a good one. You, you haven't lived until you've seen this body. He looks like that movie Powder. Not one ounce of melatonin or whatever it is, or melanin that you put in your, what is that, in, in your skin? Melanin? Anyway, how funny is that? He should be down any minute. Anyway, for the main part of the quilt, I decided I'm going to use this, which is another purple... Can you see the, how a color changes the shot cottons? How that works is when they're weaving the thread, they'll put all like like the purple threads going, you know, top to bottom and that like, you know, vertically, and then they'll weave it with horizontally with say a pink and that or a, a, a blue. And that's what happened with this. So it's like this this ras dark raspberry purple and a, and a blue. And when you move this, you get two different colors. Now, what I want to do with this is in fact, 
uh, when I put it on, I think I'm going to do, uh, I, uh, I know I'm going to do a big stitch quilting, but I think it's going to be a chevron in the larger part with a big stitch using all of these colors that I had chose as my accent pieces. So this is something I would like to get done like maybe this next week. So hopefully I'll have something uh, next week. Now, you know, I'm working on Collins quote. You know, my nephew, Chris Turner is here. I'm, I'm almost finished with that damn Collins quilt. And I'm going to tell you something. When I designed it, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I just put in all these blocks and, and you know, I think I'm dragging my feet because um, I'm not wild. I'm not wild about it yet, and I, and I haven't really placed all the blocks where I wanted. I mean, it's one thing when you put it on paper. It's another thing when you actually make the blocks. And then when you put it in your design board, you know oftentimes it doesn't speak to you in the same way. And so what I need to do is move those blocks around, but I've just been stalling on finishing like the last 12 blocks. And, um, and well, you as a creative understand that. And so I know that, I, you know, this, this thing has been on my board. The kids are like two. It's been on my board for a long time and um, on my wall. And I really need to kind of finish it up. And I'm just kind of hesitating. At any rate, so I'd like to get that finished this weekend and then this finished next week. Um, oh, <laughs> look who's here. Now, I want to clarify something. <laughs> I was not outside mowing the lawn naked, okay? That is, if that's what he told you, it's not true. <laughs> well, I don't know. That could have stunted the uh, the growth of the lawn permanently. It may not have been too bad an idea to I do know. that. Though. All right, so do you hear that tulip barking in the background? This is, a, this is a dog that hasn't moved in four years, and all of a sudden she's giving these little barks. Well, n now she thinks she can hear. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Or she doesn't know who I am. So what have you been doing this morning? Well, I, what I did was I first showed them all the shot cottons I got at Liza's this week, right? Yeah, those are nice. They're gorgeous, right? And then I also talked about this that I got. This buttered yellow to make the yellow and white quilts, right? From that's, Michael Miller. That's nice. Cotton Couture. And soft yellow. Yeah. Oh, by the way. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and then I got a couple of other things that I'm just going to show you. Um, this, I got this again, another Oriental Trading for... I like that catalog. Why? It just has weird stuff in it. I know, but I, here's the thing. I've never ordered from Oriental Trading. I don't know why we get them four times a year. And I picked up your business name, it looks like. Yeah, well, anyway. But it's obscure, weird. It's almost more party stuff. Yeah, right? it's very I, I, party stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, but look, here's the other thing about these kinds of things. This is, Jeff does not so, Jeff. Nope, do not. Although he did make um, uh, some ha ham hammocks, hammock hassocks. Yeah, but that was more upholstery. There was no sewing involved with that. You can cut out a piece of material and stick it on something and use a staple gun. You might it. remember they were featured in Quilter's Home in, yeah. during the Stone Age, but it, he actually did all of those, and they're yeah. beautiful. Yeah, those are fun. Hi, Anne. Anyway. Um, so, I don't know what, but I know, you know, when you get weird stuff like this, there is a lot, a lot of inspiration in there. So, you might not want to actually order something from here. Like, I, I don't do parties, theme parties like this. But, you know, there's an awful lot. Just take a look. I just opened up a random page. Look at these, like, these, these flags. They're made of plastic. But you know what? These could easily be adapted to a fun quilt, couldn't they? like a triangle quilt and, and add some of these in there, like an orange, white, green, purple, uh, big triangle quilt like this, you know, up and down the triangles. And then every once in a while, put in a face of Frankenstein or Dracula or a pumpkin or a ghost or whatever. Well, like they did here. Gee, what a, what a genius I am. But um, yeah, but you know, there's a ton of, of, if you just open your eyes, you'll find a ton of, uh, inspiration everywhere you look. So but even for those, I'll do it, and I'll do it to color sample from to figure out what colors. If I'm designing an illustration, what I want to do, mm -hmm. or if I have my camera with me and I'm at Pottery Barn and I see something I like, I take the pictures. I may not like the design, but I like the colors and like how they blend them all together, and then just sample out of that and find stuff to match it. Right, right, and 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 as I had mentioned earlier uh, in another uh, episode of this, that you know designers for like Hallmark, American Greetings, they get paid. Thousands. American Greetings Hallmarks put in millions of dollars to find the color trends and get the right color combinations. And they pay 
big bucks to designers to kind of put those colors together. And so you might as well just go into a Hallmark store, a store or a card store and pick out a card or two and put all those colors exactly, match the colors to the colors of the card, and there you have a color palette. If right. it pleases you in the card, it'll please you in a quilt. So um, that is, you know, one way to do it. I got these to try. I can't see what Now, I had these before. They're buried in my studio somewhere. They're called Leslie Riley's Tap Transfer Artist Paper. Have any of you ever used these? Um, I know that it's probably a mirrored image. I can't help it. That's Facebook, folks. But have any of you ever used these uh, tap papers? Uh, I think, well, they're transfer artist papers, and that's why they're called tap. But um, apparently what you could do with these is that you can inkjet or paint or stamp or draw any of your images on these papers, right? And then you can iron them onto any surface. I, and the, I mean any surface, like wood, glass, um, uh, fabric, uh, you know, and they say that the colors turn out crisp. Um, those are really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And then you can, oh, here's the other thing. So say you have a couple of different images, you can actually um, overlap these images. So you might want to do like a news, look at this one. This looks like it might have been overlapped. It looks like it's some kind of graphic, and then there are some birds on top. So it's just overlay. So you could run it through the printer a couple of times, you think? Well, I I don't see why not, but you could also just run it through once and then run it through again. Or, you know, two different and then, then kind of layer them, yeah, which is another good thing to do. I mean, putting it through the printer twice, I don't know how they go through the printer. Sometimes during my printer, these kind of papers, not this one in particular because I haven't used this yet, but sometimes when you put some papers like that into your your. Um, into your computer, into your printer, the heat or whatever the the causes the, it to it, stick. Yeah, causes it to kind of curl and whatever. Yeah, and um, so it's hard to put it in twice, you know. But well, Louise says they're great for collage and mixed media work. But I'm going to put up a link on my website tomorrow or today or tomorrow when we for this. I actually saw a. Uh, I, an embroiderer, I, got, I, I found this thing on, on YouTube, an embroiderer who actually uses something like this, and I think it was this, but they didn't use, you know, they didn't use the brand, onto fabric, and then embroiders over the photo, and it looked amazing, and it's a tutorial, so you could try it, it's not like, you know, it's not hideously difficult, um, and she does thread painting with uh, embroidery floss. So I'm going to put that up and I'm going to try, you know, using the tap paper myself and, and see what you think. That could be kind of fun. I do think so. Yeah, you know what, Peggy Jo, they, they would be good for quilt uh, block it's, that you're going to use pictures on, but there's so many other um, ways to do that. This isn't this isn't particularly cheap. If it works well, I will put it on my uh, in my um, store into my store next week. Speaking of store, you guys, a couple of weeks ago I told you, and this isn't listed yet. It'll go on probably today. Um, it was the nylon uh, invisible thread from Arafel. Well, I got them for the store, so I have about uh, uh, I don't know five, six of each. Is that is that the stuff that was like? Thinner than hair, almost. Yeah, I mean, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I have these on my uh, website right now. Oh, well, they'll be up uh, probably later today. You can order them. I guess that's what I'll be doing. That's exactly <laughs> what you're going to be doing later today. Um, they retail for ten bucks. I'm going to sell them for nine fifty. How's that? Good so, deal. All right. So uh, let's just get rid of them, and there you go. So. These are pretty incredible, and I'm going to see if I can come up with some projects to kind of show you this as well. Um, again, <laughs> I keep saying I have, I have nothing to talk to you about. Now here I am another half an hour later. Also, it lies, as you know, that K uh, Facet and Liza Lucy, this sounds like the K Facet Liza Lucy uh, channel, but they have another book out, and it's called Quilts in Italy. And it's uh, 25, or I mean 20 quilts from, you know, Rowan, inspired by Rowan. The designs by Rowan, and it's for patchwork and quilting. And I love some of these things in here. Now, Turner, let me show you one of them that I really. Well, first of all, you can't go wrong with a K facet quilt because every time you put one of his Ooh, that's fabrics together, or a couple of his fabrics together, it works beautifully. I love this one. Look at this. These are all his Cotton stripes. Can you see that? So I. Cotton? What? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Shot Cotton. You know, I'm, I get enough grief from online. Do I need your grief too? Let me see if I can. Where do I have? Okay, so here are the stripes I got. I got a couple of the stripes, right? Um, but this is a whole quilt made of the stripes. Isn't this color? Aren't these yeah, it's colors spectacular. beautiful? And you know, as an art director, you know what I'm really jealous of? What? The quality of these photos. They go to the most amazing places to shoot his stuff. Right. And it, oh, it, you know what it really f reflects? The inspiration of the environment and how it kind of influences what's going on in the quilt. Right. I don't know. I'd, I'd love to go on one of those shoots. I have I to tell amazing. you about K-Fasta quilts, really. And I know this sounds like kind of weird, but, um, I... They're not difficult quilts to do. They're very, very easy traditional patterns. It, this is a case where the fabric actually makes the quilt. Right. Even the blocks are bigger than normal. The fabrics make the quilt. Well, I lo look at this one. I love that. Yeah, it's that's bright. Good. It's happy. It's Gorgeous. Okay, here's where I sound naive. Is is that all fussy cutting for the flowers? Is that what why they're in each one? Uh, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the it. fabric are is nice and big. There's one in here though that's really modern. Well, there's two. That there's two more. And there's a bunch. As I said, there are twenty. But there's two more that I want to show you. One. Yeah, I like that. Uh, this is it. This is it. Yeah. All right. I love this. And you know. This is the one I may <laughs> I might use my yellow and white fabric for. I think this would look yeah, amazing in yellow and white. It's just stripes. Look at the inspiration. It's boat covers. That's the inspiration. That's how Kate gets his inspiration. Look, it's umbrellas on the beach. That's the inspiration. So again, inspiration is everywhere. Now I'm going to see if I can show you that picture, the picture of that quilt. Here it is. Here's the full picture of that quilt. I mean, it's not for everybody, but I like it. I it, think it's amazing. It's so simple and wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. And the other thing I want to do now, this is a little more difficult now because there's a traditional way to do it. And then there's a non-traditional way to do it. And it's this. Not, I, I've always wanted to do one of these tumbling block patterns. You know, and this is really interesting and easy because, in fact, when you put a, a cave quilt together or you're using busy fabrics, let's see if I can do this, you just do strips. You just do strips. They're not, there's no inset seams. Now, traditionally, this was done with an inset seam, but these are, these are done in strips. So these blocks right here that you would normally inset, are cut in half. So you can see that the strip goes right down like this. You know what's kind of cool about that is usually- But you can't you tell because of the fabric. When you see tumbling blocks, you're usually looking, you're just seeing the blocks. Mm -hmm. This one, you actually see the fabric and the block becomes almost a secondary pattern within it. Right. I think that's kind of unusual. I like that. Yeah, it's uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Just delicious. There's, a, there's a, a lot of them. Again, you can get a signed copy, uh, autographed copy of Kate, Facets Quilts in Italy at www.gloriouscolor.com. They're in stock right now, along with that other one, Bold Blooms, that I have been showing you, yeah. which is just the most serious and absolutely gorgeous. I like his books, even if you're not a quilter. I just find mm -hmm. them neat to look at. All right, I got this. I did it. I subscribed. I only subscribed for a year because it was very expensive, and I used some of the money that I sold some of my stuff with. Um, as a little treat, but I subscribed to Salvage Magazine, which is from Canada, I believe. It uh, no, it's London. Is it London? No, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it says London. No, that's where that thing is from. I can't uh, remember where this is from. I, this might be British. Hold on. One is from Canada. Yeah, this is from London. So Salvage is from London, and the other one that I like uh, is from is from Canada. But anyway, so Salvage just came, and this one is the this one is for fabric, and they seem to have themes. I don't know a whole lot about the magazine, but again, it is so gorgeous and luscious, and it feels expensive and good. And by the way, folks, these are not um, magazines that you throw away. They're, it's more like a book. These it, it, right, right. These are really collectors. I look at the inspiration in these. Just going through. Just look at the inspiration, and and the and the articles are incredibly um, informative and well written. 
And uh, beautifully shot. Beautifully shot. I mean, I have to tell you, even the smell of this magazine is good. Really, Salvage Magazine. And it, and again, it was like the other one. I can't. Re the name escapes me right now. But it's not just about fabric and stuff. I, I mean, there was an article in there about them making soap that I thought was interesting because they have like these huge, like eight foot by ten foot boxes on the ground that they've poured the soap mixture into, let it set, and then it's how they cut it up and how they put the stamp inside of it. It was some, fr was it a French soap, I think? I can't remember what it was. Yeah. It was some brand I've seen, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh, I, I just want to go back for a minute. Yeah. I love that Patty Hook says that we used to call Kafe, Kafe, because they didn't know how to pronounce it. And I get that all the time. Um, cafe, calf. Uh, his name is pronounced Kafe. And so, just so you know, it's Kafe facet. That's the way you say it. But he, it's mispronounced all the time. And I don't, listen, I'm brave now because I'm behind this screen. But I, <laughs> when people say stuff like, like, oh, I love that Kafe fabric, or I love that calf fabric. And I, you know, I'm not going to, it's not my name. I'm not going to say anything. If you call me Michelle, I'll deck you. But, uh, you know, whatever. So anyway, it's Kafe. And again, uh, Salvage, another very inspirational magazine. As a matter of fact, if you go on their website right now, and I'm not sure it's just for subscribers or not, but some of their back issues are half price. And so you can get a, ch a chance to look at, at some of the back issues for half price. And you could either get the this for half price, which is about 10 bucks, I guess, or you can get a $9 um, e-magazine for 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 half price, which is like $4.50 or something like that, um, for, you know, just to kind of get a, a sense of it. So go over there and um, go to the salvage. I don't even know what their, their email is. I don't know. Wait, here's salvage here. Does it even say? Yeah, it's uh, salvage.org, S-E-L-V-E-D-G-E dot org. And um, I, I don't, again, I got a special email, but I'm assuming a half price is a half price, and it's only for a certain time, I think through the weekend maybe, or maybe next week, huh. or next month or something. But anyway, that's that. You know, many years ago, hi, Maureen, how are you? Maureen Rivera from Brooklyn. Hey. Hi, Maureen, how are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> Maureen, I have to tell you about Maureen. Maureen used to live in Long Valley, New Jersey. She's the daughter of our friend Catherine Rivera, who is now living in Paris with her husband, Philippe. Um, Catherine and Philippe and Maureen and Loris, their children, moved here. And, um, and uh, Catherine started quilting here. Well, now she's like a very accomplished quilter and shows in Paris, she showed in the United States in some pretty prestigious shows. And, um, and, you know, they waited forever, Catherine, to get her green card and become a citizen. And she became a citizen and about, what, like six months later, something like that. Her husband got transferred to Paris, so now they're back there. But Maureen, which is really interesting, is um, I think her picture was even in Vanity Fair a year or so ago, Maureen a couple of years was? ago. Yeah, Maureen is part. She is part of a New York City um, a synchronized swimming team. And they did a synchronized swimming routine at some pool in the Hamptons a couple of summers ago. And, and you know, they've gotten a lot of press because I think they're the only ones in, you know, in that whole, you know, in the city that, that does something like that. So Maureen does that, but she's also, um, you know, she works for a perfume company. So Maureen's job is to create and uh, monitor new scents. Her perfume. Isn't that interesting? She works for, I think, a French company in New York. I believe it's a French company. I'm sorry, Maureen. I'm sorry to tell all your business. But yeah, I think it's... Um, and she's cute. Uh, so cute. And her boyfriend is so cute. And nice. And yeah, nice. Incredibly and nice. Nicest kids. I'm under... Gee whiz. I need to start drinking my... I should have been drinking uh, coffee out of a bowl when Evan was little. I might have... <laughs> Could have influenced you a little <laughs> sure bit. Sure could have. Anyway, um, well, uh, Maureen, <laughs> Lucy wants your website. If there's a website for the synchronized swimming or whatever. But anyway, uh, and she's young. She's really young. Oh, she says now she's blushing. Oh, that's oh, bullshit. Young, beautiful, <laughs> smart. Yeah, young, beautiful, smart. Well, uh, basically, we kind of hate Marine. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> She's given us enough reasons to yeah, write but, there. But. but we decided we were going to talk about her anyway. Let me talk to you about this. Now, I don't know who sent me this. 
Somebody made this incredible book cover for me out of my fabric, um, Califon, many years ago and sent me this. And I love it. I don't know who did it. I don't, they didn't write anything in the book. They, um, they didn't tag it or label it in any way. Look at this. Look at That's the really inside. Nice. Yeah, I know. Look at the inside. I told her not to use my photograph that way. I, yeah, that's, it, that's my new Mr. Electric coming up. That's coming up. <laughs> anyway, I don't know who did that for me, but and I'm sure I thank them. But anyway, if I did not, I thank you. And this is years ago, but I want you to know that I'm using it. You know what I'm using it for? I had this idea this last week, and I have to tell you about this. Um, I call this my angel book. Want to know why? I don't know why, because my picture's not in there, but okay, <laughs> go it. ahead. It's my angel book, and what I've decided to do was to stop just being so uh, technology-based. You know, I'm so technology-based before, honestly, when we first wake up in the morning, we're on our phones. Before we go to bed at night, we're on our iPads. Yeah. In bed, right? Um, why we don't have children. <laughs> He's barren. Anyway, I have to tell you that. Um, <laughs> anyway, what I want to tell you about this is I decided to kind of go a little old school. And I, may, I think I'm going to try it again. I may take a week off and just do, just hide my phone, hide my iPad, hide my laptop, and just try to go old school. But, you know, I read so many things on Facebook that break my heart. Now, when I was sick, people were so kind to me. And people are sick, their, their, their pets are passing away, their husbands are having uh, medical issues, they're laid up in the hospital, or they just had, for instance, a knee replacement, or something like that. Yeah. And I, I decided that I would, and I, maybe I shouldn't give this away, I, I will. I, I'm going to tell you, because I'd like you to do this too. I'd like you to start an angel book. Um, what I do is, as I'm reading, if some story touches me, if something happens, you know, I have like 20-some thousand followers, 30,000 followers, 40,000, I can't remember, 35, 40,000 followers when you add all up Twitter and Facebook and whatever. Uh, so I can't do this uh, to everyone, but when I grab something and I see it, what I have done, what I started doing was, this will be a surprise to you, why well, I don't get my work done, I, um, I will try to find them online. And I call them just to say that somebody is reading and thinking about them. And, and then I put their name and the date in the angel book. I didn't know you were doing that. That's really nice. Uh, yeah, I, it's something that I think is really, really important to reach out personally. Because, you know, it's one thing to post online when, for instance... I put Crest toothpaste in my hand and rub it on my face for shaving cream. It's another thing to really reach out and become part of this global community. I mean, Facebook and those things have made us, in fact, a global community, but we're not really touching each other the way that we could. There's, we're missing the human touch, which is very similar to what we were talking about this morning. You were talking about the snowflake generation. Tell, talk about the snowflake yeah, generation. Yeah, I was reading in an article there. They coined this term snowflake generation, and they're, they're 20 somethings that have, uh, they're kind of the end result of being homeschooled, not really being socialized, being totally caught up in social media, their own little devices, that they think they're so unique and so special that nobody else quite meets their standards and they become obnoxious, demanding, and kind of don't fit in with society. And, you know, I comment on this a lot, that I, I see it a lot, you know, in, in, in your my, my job. Um, and you think, well, maybe it's just kind of unusual to that environment, but it's big enough that there's actually articles appearing about it all over the web. And I, I just thought it was an interesting way to coin it. You know, you, you may say that you have friends, but then if you're not really connecting or interacting or talking with other people, you really, you really don't. You know, it's, it's kind of sad. Now, can I say one thing? Yeah. Speaking about connecting, Maureen Brown earlier asked a question and I have to respond. I will never tell. What's the question? You'll find out later when the show's over. You're going to have to scroll through and find out. I hope you're still on there, Maureen.
<laughs> okay, anyway. Anyway, yes, I, Lucy, I really do call. I call and I will either leave a message. And you know what's been very... Um, it's been so rewarding because, you know, these are some of these people I don't know. I've never seen their name before. They're part, one of my friends. They're not vocal. They don't comment on everything that I write. Um, but I see that, you know, something had happened to their husband or, or grandchild or whatever. They're asking for prayer or whatever. And I'm not really a prayer, but, you know, I am a humanist. Um, uh, yeah, I do call. I, and sometimes it's very difficult to find the uh, phone number. So if I can't find it, I don't call. Let me just say I move on because my goal is one a day. I don't keep long. I mean, but what I do find, the reward, I mean, I'm getting so much more out of it. It's kind of like that old thing where you give, you get more when you give than you get when you get. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm finding out about people's other lives, like their cross-stitching lives, or or someone I talked to last week um, talked about how she got her first gig to teach, or somebody else about uh, she's dying, she's dying uh, for, she dies, that's what she does, D-Y- Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> you yeah. only do that once. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she dies. So, um, um, so you know, Lucy asked an interesting question. How do you connect when sometimes wanting to do this may be misunderstood by others as being stockish or too much? You do it gently. You call and you say, hi, my name is Mark Lipinski. Well, first of all, they know who I am and they'll know who you are because they're your Facebook friends. I don't do this just randomly on the internet. I mean, they know me. They're, they they befriended me on Facebook or on Twitter. So this is not, you know, it's not like a secret who I am. And so that would be the same with you, Lucy. So you call and say, hi, this is Lucy. We're Facebook friends. I noticed you were having a hard time. I just want you to know that um, someone's reading, someone cares. And uh, we're here for you. That's all. And just say, how is your day going? How are you feeling? How are things going with you? I think people are floored. They don't get that kind of personal attention anymore. They just don't get it. No. And, and from someone who had that from when I was sick, I know how important it is. Frankly, I was too sick, and I think you were too overwhelmed to even take that in at that time. That's how sick I was. But I want to tell you, as I was getting well, or even while I was sick, knowing that those kind of calls and letters and cards were coming meant everything in the world. And why shouldn't we play it forward? We're human people. We're not just these things we're watching this stuff on. So I don't want to get all... Um, you know, I don't want to get all like hokey pokey on you here. And by the way, if you don't do it, I would love if everybody did it. Wouldn't it be fun? But oh, wouldn't it be a better world? But, uh, and by the way, this has nothing to do with Paul. If I happen to see that they love Donald Trump on everything posted on there, doesn't bother me at all. I'm not calling because of who or not calling because of who they might be voting for, who they might be married to, what they might believe in, what their jobs might be. That's not my good job. That's not my business. My business is to touch someone from human to human. But there's also a halo effect to that that I found interesting. Because when you were in the hospital and all that was happening... There were people that I knew of that were reaching out for you, and it comforted me, and it made me understand kind of where we fit in in the big picture, you know? I and, mean, we it, are, it, and we are and, all connected. And, you know, and to, and to think that somebody else cared enough to take the time to do that for Mark meant a lot to me. I get it. And it was pretty big. Um, so, who, whomever did this wonderful book for me and never knew where it was going or whether I ever used it, Again, I want to thank you. This book has become a very important tool to uh, the forward movement of my soulful life. So thank you. All right, one more thing. These books I love and these little tools. And I got them from, you know, who developed these tools were Karen Montgomery. Now, you know Karen Montgomery yep. from Pittsburgh. She's right. a big... Karen Montgomery is a big designer. She designed for years for... And she may still be, but I'm not sure. But she designed for years for... Uh, 
timeless treasures. She has books. She has been on the lecture circuit. She teaches. She's uh, she's a little bit of everything. As a matter of fact, I think she's in North Carolina right now. <laughs> she's spreading the joy. She's everywhere. That's right. She's everywhere. Well, Karen wrote and self-published these books that I was crazy about. Um, and so I got them. It's called uh, The Scrap Crazy 6-Inch. And so there are all these different books using your scraps, all these different patterns, rather, using your scraps. And um, and how, I mean, it's a short little book, but it's so unique at how she puts these together. Then she has another one, Crazy for More, with a bunch more. These are so simple to do. But what's best is she has these templates. These are the templates. This is it. This is all you need. Your scraps and a scrap anywhere as big as any of these templates, right? And so there's five of these templates, or four of these templates, rather. They come. They're, they're non-slip. They're called Scrap Crazy Six Inches. And they're from, let me get this out of here so you don't get a glare. They're from Creative Grids. They're this called non-slip, in case you can't read backwards, non-slip, scrap crazy, six inches by Creative Grids. You can find Karen's books and these tools for sale at her quilt shop in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's called uh, The Quilt Company, and her, I'm going to read this, this is uh, the uh, email address or the website, rather, where you can order. And that's this is where I got it. I ordered from her website. It is www the quilt company the quilt company.com and i have to tell you not very expensive at all i love i have to, you know turner i have to tell you this. i love that they're self published yep. i love that you're actually supporting 100% the designers who put the, who risk who put their name on it who actually put out the money and sell from their shops uh, it it ensures that our shops are healthy if we support it. So I'm asking you, by the way, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to, clearly. But I just wanted to show that I love these because I have a ton of scraps and what you can do and how to support a local quilt shop, but how to get a, a fun thing too. So I love, yeah, right, Joanne, I love small entrepreneurs. Although um, the quilt company, Karen Montgomery, has been around for uh, a, a couple of decades um, in the quilt industry as a professional, but, um, you know, and I'm not selling these. I get no money from it, nothing like that. I'm just telling you, the quilt company, I think it's a good, it's a good place and it's a great place for these books. So thequiltcompany.com, um, go get your crazy for more and your crazy, scrap crazy books. Love that. Now, uh, I'm just about finished, but there was a winner whom I can't remember for, Quilt Therapy, the book. Remember that? And I ask you to guess my confirmation name. I didn't even know what it was. So <laughs> Seven letters, two vowels. A lot of people came up with Michael. There were, there were several, but there were only two people who came up with my name. Ready? It is Gregory. G-R-E vowel G. O vowel R Y Gregory Mark Edward Gregory Lipinski. Two people came up with that, and I believe the woman who won this, because uh, there were two, and I put their names in a hat. You know, I have to do it just for my own because I, you know, I'm a half baked. But I put my name in a hat. I believe the woman who, and I may be completely wrong. I'll post this on the blog as well. The woman who won the book's name is Jane or Joan, and I can't remember. And I have to go upstairs and look because it's on a piece of paper. And as I told you, I wasn't even going to do this this morning. So Jane or Joan won this for guessing Gregory. Why I came up with Gregory, I have no idea. I have no connection. Oh, you pick your own name? Yeah. For your oh, company. I didn't know that. Why is Gregory? I have no idea why it's Gregory. There was a King Gregory. There was a Pope Gregory. Um, but I, 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 the closest I can think is I was heavily influenced by the Brady Bunch. That's all I can think of. Could have been. That's all I can think of. <laughs> So that's that. I would it. expect Alecal Jan or Marcia to be. <laughs> yeah, Marcia could have been my name. I really wanted to be Marcia anyway, but. <laughs> 
Well, I think Pope Gregory is a saint, if I'm not mistaken, Joanne. I think that's that's what it is. So that's how I got Gregory. Um, but all my friends were picking like really cool names like Sebastian and you know all these kinds of weird names and Clementine and whatever. But I chose uh, Gregory. Linda Lum de Bono's uh, name was Marsha. Marsha. <laughs> Linda Lum de Bono, <laughs> Marsha. <laughs> You know, I'm still trying to weasel out of Linda Lundabono, and she won't tell me what her Chinese name was. You know, because oh. she has a Chinese name, just like many um, Jews, if not all, like, you know, religious Jews when they're born. I know that they're, you name it after somebody with an initial or whatever, but there's also a Hebrew name. And I need to find that out for Liza Lucy. I'm going to have to ask Liza with her. Oh. Hebrew name is anyway. <laughs> oh, Lucy says it's Gregorio in Spanish. Gregorio. Yeah. <laughs> that I like. It sounds so Game of Thrones, doesn't it? Oh, Linda says that her her name her Chinese oh. name <laughs> is an ancient Chinese, Chinese secret. secret. <laughs> She's out of her mind that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, there's Luana Rubin. Hi, Luana. You know, I was just at eQuilter this morning. I'm looking to buy some fabric, and um, I I looked at eQuilter, and I ha I have I just kind of went through it. I want to tell you because I haven't bought fabric in a very 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 long time. Um, eQuilter.com, your your website is looking just terrific. I think it looks great. Um, the way it's laid out, I love the quotes from your customers. And what customer isn't satisfied with eQuilter.com? Uh, you were the first people that I actually ordered from online a uh, hundred years ago. eQuilter has set the standard in our industry for the whole, uh, you know, online purchasing. And I'm I'm so happy and proud to have Luana Rubin as my friend. Now, Luana, here's what I want to tell you. You and I have not spoken on the phone for a long time. Now, here's my, I have a bone to pick with Luana. So, Luana, when you want to talk to Luana, you have to make an appointment. She says, okay, so what time is free? She's always available. What time is free? Well, you know, I am so ADD. I can't stick to a time. I have no idea what I tell her, and I can't remember to call her. So, Luana, please, on someday I'm just picking up the phone, and I'm calling your ass, and that's just the way it's going to be. We just have to be friends like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, Luana did just shout out, hi, sweetie, and I feel bad that she didn't even acknowledge you. <laughs> hi, Luana. Yeah, you got to love Luana. I love Luana. If you don't know Luana, make it your business to know Luana Rubin. She is so... Uh, so soulful and knowledgeable and just rich with information and just a really, really, really nice person. If you don't know Luana, get to know her and drop her an email and shop at eQuilter because it's a, it's a great place. It's a, it really is I'm a great place. I'm trying to think. Place. I don't even know what And I'm by stopping. the way, for uh, Luana, oh, Luana, please call before I go to Rome. <laughs> Although she did I'm going to call when I want to. She did <laughs> identify what day, but not time that she's leaving. So she's loosened up a lot. I love you. I love me some Luana Rubin. All right. I will call before you go to Rome on Thursday. I got a nice note from um, Marianne Fons this week, too. You did? I did. So she and I, and hopefully... Paula Nadelstone, who doesn't know about this yet, um, are going to get together in September right before Quilters take Manhattan. I love Paula. Yeah. Um, can Mark move a bit to his right? Left? Right. Like this? I would like to see more of Jeff. <laughs> You're going the wrong way then. Well, we got to get over right. here. Oh, I even <laughs> put my hand on my heart. This is my left. My, my right is this way. Anyway. All right. So uh, there's one thing that Jeff does not know about. I talk about it on Facebook. You know, there's this new man underwear. This, <laughs> I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. There's new male underwear. We wear old man underwear, okay? It doesn't have to be new man underwear. No, it doesn't matter. No, no. You wear, you wear, my, Jeff wears, okay, I'll be honest. They're I'm trim you. cut underwear. It's not bikini underwear, okay? It's just not old man bloomer underwear that some people are known to wear. Go ahead. You look like Sharon Tate in that underwear. I do I, not. I, yes, you do. It's like okay. it's. It looks bikini. I wear big, tidy whities, and of course, my ass is so big they look like yeah, a sail from the Nina, the Pinta, or the Santa Maria. But anyway, I have these big white underwear, and he wears these little trim things, and he has this little butt. And, but anyway. There's this new underwear that just came out, and uh, a guy who was a bike rider okay. um, developed it. 
And what it is is, and I'm going to draw you a picture of it because you won't believe your eyes. Let me see if I have this. I'm just going to use this. Uh, what is this called? Like Pelon? Uh, yeah, it's Pelon. All right, so it looks like this. Okay, so this is underwear. Is this from the side or front These, on? No, this is front on. Here's your leg, here's your leg, and this is you, flat. So anyway, <laughs> very Ken doll. So anyway, um, so, you know, he rides a bike, and so his underwear kept riding up, right? And so he said that his junk kept getting squashed, or he needed to readjust his junk. And so he was having a hard time readjusting his junk, because he always looked like he was, like, fondling himself, right? Which, by the way, who cares? I mean, isn't that what men do? We touch ourselves. Now, you guys are it's, women, mainly, but you know your husbands, your sons, whatever. There's not one well, man alive. Women have that equivalent. Yeah. I, how many the, times do you see this? Yeah, yeah, you see this all the time, okay. right? All right. We're, we're even. Okay. okay. So, but, so this guy then, rather than just like, you know rather than just readjusting, what he did was he added a strap like this that you can reach from your belt line, from your waistline. And what you do is you pull up on the strap and shake a little oh, God. so that your junk <laughs> is more comfortable. Okay. So I, I, I can't comfortable. be a part of this. Well, well I... <laughs> And so, I guess it's just because I saw Jeff naked, naked, or Jeff Turner naked a couple of minutes ago that I, I, I had to say. It. But, but this is how he does it, so he doesn't look rude. So you're walking around and you're, you know, you're tugging at your your waistband, which I find to be ridiculous. Why would you be pulling it up? It should be down at your well, ankles. You're, so you're pulling no, it down. No, right? no, you're not really pulling it, it up. What you're doing is you're kind of shaking it. You're shaking your junk uh, so that it will put that the the gravity from your junk will will push it down. Oh, Diane says you can't relate. You know, I knew some No, I'm not even going to go there. Some parts of you fall too. So you might be able to use this underwear sometime in the future, Diane. I'm just telling you. All right. So, yeah, I I you know, I gotta tell you something. I think it's overthought. I'm I think sorry. it's overthought too. And I just wanna tell this guy, you know, if your Yankee Doodle dandies are hanging to your ankles, you need more than a strap on your underwear. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, good. And with that, I think we need to say goodbye. <laughs> now, we should have done that five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, right. thanks everybody for watching. Uh, go to the blog at marklipinski slash wordpress.com and I will have links to all of the stuff we talked about today. Maybe even the underwear. And you can get the men in your life a little no. lever. No. Bye everybody. Bye. Talk to you soon. See you next week. Bye bye. Hi. There we go. I think it's that.